Good evening and welcome to our celebration of the Lord's Supper, Holy Thursday. Our opening hymn is Praise to You, O Christ our Savior. Praise to you, O Christ our Savior, Word of the Father calling us to life, Son of God who leads us to freedom, glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You are the Word who calls us out of darkness, you are the Word who leads us into light, you through the desert glory to you lord jesus christ praise to you O christ our savior word of the father calling us to life son of god who leads us to freedom glory to you lord jesus christ the one whom prophets hoped and longed for. You are the one who speaks to us today. You are the one who leads us to our future. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ, our Savior, word of the Father calling us to life, Son of God, who leads us to freedom, glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You are the Word who calls us to be servants, you are the Word whose only law is love, you are the Word made flesh who lives among us, glory Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. 
mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel. On the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of the month and then with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. <clears throat> they shall take some of its blood and apply it to the doorpost and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you shall eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on the same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This, shall be, this day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks. with the blood of Christ. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good he has done for me? 
the cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay, in the presence of all his people. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash 
my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, but he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Reverend Pastor, beloved parishioners, I must say it is so much better to have you here than last year when I simply had pictures of you on the pews. <laughs> a picture is worth a thousand words, but a person is worth so much more. A picture is just something of a symbol. And I was reminded of symbols just the other day. Recently, I attended a meeting, and before the meeting began, we said the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. We all turned to the flag, and we said these words. The flag is such a beautiful thing for us. It symbolizes our country, our patria. And when we say the Pledge of Allegiance, it's an interesting thing that happens if you say this frequently. Although I had not said the Pledge of Allegiance since I was probably in elementary school, I was impressed by what struck me. In that short, you know, those short seconds, less than a minute, of course, a simple love for our country began to grow. This is so true for the many signs and symbols that we have throughout our lives. Even as I looked upon the pews last year when none of you were present, although your pictures were, there was a certain affection a certain love that grows even looking upon this symbol of you. That's so much more beautiful, though, to not just simply have the symbol, but to have the person. And this is what is so incredible about our Catholic faith. We are surrounded by symbols throughout. Many of us wear a cross around our neck. Many of us wear the brown scapular. Many of us have crucifixes in our homes or statues of the saints. All wonderful things, signs, and symbols that lead us to the story of our salvation. But our Lord was not content to leave us with a mere symbol of himself. Rather, in his great providence, in his great love and affection for us, he left us not a symbol, but himself. These are the very sacraments that we celebrate. Sacraments are signs by which that which they signify is made present. A kind of phrase that needs to be unpacked a little bit. Many of us, when we attend a baptism, we see a child washed with water and words said and action performed. That action of washing is a kind of symbol. But because it's a sacrament, it does much more than just the symbol. The child's soul is washed clean, just as the washing, the external washing, symbolizes. These are the two parts of a sacrament. There's the outward aspect, and then there's the inward reality. Our Lord at the Last Supper knew that we would need him, 
and how much we yearned for him when we could not have him. Remember that first March, that first Sunday in March, where you were not here, but you were at home. Perhaps many of you watched on TV, as I'm sure there are some watching now, longing to receive the Eucharist. In your hearts, you know that the Eucharist is not just symbol, it is not just sign, but it is Christ himself. Christ knowing in just a couple days' time before left his apostles this sacrament in the Last Supper. In that sacrament, our Lord's sacrifice upon the cross is made present even before it happens in time. And now, many centuries after that act of pure, perfect love of our Lord's death on the cross for us, it is still present. In just a short time, with the words of consecration, our Lord will become here present in uh, hidden flesh. I've said in the past, the beautiful thing about the Eucharist is that Christ is present just as you are present. The you of your hair, the, your eye color, your skin tone, and all the rest is the external appearance. But the you is so much more. Our Lord, even when he walked among, among us in this earth, on this earth, many could just see his human flesh. They failed to see the God within. Sometimes we confuse and perhaps even lie to ourselves when we say, oh, if I could just see our Lord in the flesh, I would believe. I wouldn't be like those men and women who in his lifetime refused to believe. But I remind you that Christ is made present in the Eucharist each and every time Mass is celebrated. And yes, it is sometimes a challenge to see beyond the mere appearances. But he is there. I've been told by musicians who often try out for symphony orchestras that when they try out, a screen is placed in front of them. And they perform their musical instrument behind this screen. This was something that began perhaps a few decades ago when it was realized that there were certain biases that the directors of this orchestra, of these orchestras, would have when they would see the musicians play. Perhaps it was in their mannerisms, perhaps even something perhaps a little more difficult. And so a screen was put up. Those who hear the music play, though, know that it is not the screen that plays, but the person behind the screen. So too with our Lord. We who look upon what appears to be mere bread, what appears to be mere wine, know that behind the screen, there the person lies. The sacrament of the Eucharist. Just as the washing of a child in baptism shows forth the inner reality of the cleansing of original sin from that child's soul, so to the Eucharist, by the sign and symbol of nutrition, satisfies the hunger of our soul. And so we come back, perhaps day after day after day, so that our soul might be fed, so that it can grow to full stature in the Lord. What a great and wondrous gift the Eucharist truly is. Today, my brothers and sisters, we remind ourselves of that wondrous institution of the Most Holy Eucharist when our Lord took bread and said the words and made his everlasting promise to be always with us. Today we will rejoice. Tomorrow we will mourn with the death of our Lord. And on the Easter Vigil, we too, who have, who have died in the waters of baptism in this sacrament, will rise again with our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
With great confidence in God our Father, we lift our petitions to him. That Christ, the High Priest, guide all believers in the path of self-sacrifice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ, the Suffering Servant, inspire public servants to do more for those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ, the Innocent Victim, console the sick and comfort the sorrowing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Christ, the victorious King, lead the elect into God's heavenly reign. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those needs best spoken in the silence of our hearts. For those needs, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to receive these prayers, for they are offered in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. your Lord and Master, now become your servant. I who made the moon and stars will kneel to wash your feet. This is my As I have loved you, kneel to wash each other's feet as I have done for you. All the world will know you are my disciples. By the love that you offer, the kindness you show, you have heard the voice of God in the words that I have spoken, you beheld heaven's glory and have seen the face of God. I, your Lord and Master, now become your servant. I, who made the moon and 
stars will kneel to wash your feet. This is my commandment to love as I have loved you. Kneel to wash each other's feet as I have done for you. my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is is right right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest, 
who instituted a pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all that is today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, 
And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father, in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, 
You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only to say the word, and my soul shall be Our communion hymn is Taste and See. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord, of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall always be on my lips. My soul shall glory in the Lord. For He has been so good to me. and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see, taste and see the Glorify the Lord with me Together let us all praise his name I called the Lord and he answered me From troubles he set me free taste and 
and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see, taste and see the We will also sing One Love Released. Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banqueted for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Sing my tongue the Savior's glory Of his flesh the mystery sing Of the blood, O oh, price exceeding Shed by our immortal King Destined for the world's redemption from a noble womb to spring of a pure and spotless virgin born for us on earth below he has man with us conversing stayed the seeds of truth to sow then he closed in solemn order wondrously his life of woe on the night of that last supper Seated with his chosen band, he the paschal victim eating first fulfills the law's command. Then, as food to the disciples, gives himself with his own hand. Word made flesh, the bread of nature. By his word to flesh he turns. Wine into his blood he changes. What those scents no change discerns. Only be the heart in earnest. Faith its lesson quickly learns. Down in adoration falling, this great sacrament we hail. Over ancient forms of worship, new rites of grace prevail faith will tell us christ is present when our human senses fail to the everlasting father and the son who made us free and the Spirit God proceeding from them each eternally. Be salvation, honor, blessing, might and endless majesty.